welcome you to International Seminar Series 2022. This International Seminar Series has been a new venture from Crash Crow, um, in which we were going to invite multiple reputed international researchers from all over the globe to guide students and researchers about the research direction and the research area and to bridge the gaps. So about CRASH, CRASH is a center of research and, uh, on engineering software technologies. At CRASH, we are leveraging existing software engineering, uh, analytical listing, NLP, and deep learning learning techniques for secure development of software systems. We have five clusters in which we are working towards securing the software. The first cluster is software security intelligence that, is, that are working on vulnerability analysis of different systems varying from open source to uh, uh, open source framework like MUD to code level um, security to AI-based uh, vulnerability analysis. Then we have a security orchestration or automation cluster that is working on um, the automation of incident plan and developing a recommendation system that can help software developers. Then we have a social technical aspect uh, cluster that are dealing with social technical factors in software development, like the DevOps and also how different people, like how the people the uh, human in the loop react with the technology. We have big data analytics. They are working on cloud solution, cloud-driven solution towards the security and privacy of large amount of data and automation uh, supported by automation. And lastly, we have the distributed ledger cluster that is working on the blockchain technology and its integration with IoT supply chain. This is a crust composition. The director of our group is Professor Ali Barber. He's a full professor in the University of Adelaide School of Computer Science. He has authored and co-authored more than 220 peer-reviewed papers in premium software technology journals and conferences. Then we have four faculty members and multiple uh, postdocs. PhD students, research engineers, and collaborators and alumni. So more than we are more than 30 people working in this group. Today we are going to have our first webinar uh, series uh, talk uh, by Dr. Naya Jali. She's an associate professor in the Department of Cybersecurity and Faculty of Computing and Intelligence at University Islamabad, Pakistan. She's a we know an expert in digital forensic community and a chief trainer at National Cybersecurity and Forensics Lab, and also involved in research and development of cybersecurity solutions in music AI. She has contributed more than 50 plus research uh, articles in national, international journal and conferences, and has over 18 years of experience as a full-time faculty in teaching cybersecurity and computing. She has delivered guest talks, seminars, and training in international and international uh, forums. Her area of uh, research interests are AI, data privacy, cybersecurity, and digital forensics. Um, that's all from my side. Now I will request Dr. Snara to share her slides so that we can start today's seminar. Uh, machine learning threat is uh, was identified as one of the major cybersecurity threat in 2021 among all the other threats. So it's not, uh, it's unavoidable uh, for now. Uh, if you look at the cyber attack vector, it's very vast. You know about all these kinds of attacks which are emerging and you might be doing research in any one of the domain which is mentioned in this slide. But this, this is not an exhaustive list. Uh, there are some more. The cyber attacker's economy has changed. Uh, as you already know, that is the world of dark web where uh, hackers are selling their hacking skills over there. 
And there are, this is an era of indirect monetization where they, if they write a malware, they get a payment for per installation of that malware. It's an era of botnet rentals. If you can compromise some systems and create a botnet, then you can give that botnet on rent uh, on rental to, uh, to uh, for selling. And this is happening. Uh, so you can create a spyware and then you can sell the spyware. Uh, you can create a, uh, perform a phishing attack, steal some credentials and then sell those credentials uh, for monetary benefit. So these things are happening all around. So in this area, era, when we are facing all these uh, problems, we must be having some solutions which are able to tackle uh, these things. Machine learning has come up. Uh, basically, it is the machine learning problem is uh, the problem where we know that some pattern exists, uh, but we don't know about it. What is that pattern or where it, it does exist? And we use our data to learn that pattern and to know about that pattern. This was actually the problem. Uh, and this algorithms, all the algorithms and machine learning ingest data and learn a model to perform the task which we intend to. It can be detection of patterns or detection of trends or predictions about futures and in our decision making. We already know that machine learning is uh, supervised, unsupervised and reinforcement. And over here, if you can see that in case of supervised learning regression, it has been used for a number of problem. When we use it for weather forecasting on weather data, so we can use it for a cyber attack detection as well to forecast a cyber attack. We can use it for uh, life expectancy of, uh, of some data item or some package as well. Uh, the classification problem has been used for image classification and identity fraud detection and customer retention. We can use this for malware detection for distributed denial of service attack detection. And we have done so, and people are working in these domains. For unsupervised learning, looking at the bulk of data obtained in forensics and then clustering that data to get meaningful information about a crime that has happened can be helpful. Similarly, a recommender system for a forensic investigator to look into the data items, which might be of the interest in, in keeping in view the particular type of crime can be a recommender system for an, a digital forensic investigator. Same is the case for dimensionality deduction. When we have a huge amount of data available, some dimensions might be meaningless for a certain attack. So for a certain attack, for a certain problem, so ignoring that dimension and picking up the right dimensions uh, through some feature selection or uh, extraction algorithm, it can be helpful in cybersecurity. Then uh, reinforcement learning uh, for real-time forensic or for real-time incident response, uh, reinforcement learning will be the key where you know that what type of traffic is coming into your network. And then you can take some automated decision to respond to the some attack which is happening, which is going to or going to happen. Uh, we uh, In reinforcement learning, we talk about game AI as well, which can be used in cybersecurity as well. Uh, why we should go for AI in cybersecurity? Uh, in cybersecurity, uh, we talk about securing our systems, protection of our data from unauthorized access, unauthorized disclosure, unauthorized modification. And we actually pre uh, to try to preserve the confidentiality, integrity, and availability tried of, uh, of security. Uh, why AI can be helpful? Because AI can continuously learn. It's not based on static data. The learning capability of, uh, of AI can help in cybersecurity because in, in case of cybersecurity, we are continuously getting new data uh, over the internet in only one minute, uh, a, a lot of traffic gets generated and that a lot of the traffic is new to the system as well. So a system which can learn about the new data coming in can be helpful. And the reasoning given by AI, uh, so it, it finds stress faster, faster than a human can do or faster than a static system can do. And it eliminates time consuming tasks and we already know about. And also in the era where we are coming up with diverse certified devices, like uh, in a way we are moving towards the new technologies and IoT devices, an era of connected vehicles, an era, an era of uh, uh, autonomous air vehicles uh, uh, and then smart grids. So in those cases where we are coming up with new kinds of devices, uh, or if, if we'll be having a system which will be able to perform in certain, certain, under certain constraints, this can be useful. Uh, if we talk about some general techniques of machine learning, uh, which are used in cybersecurity, it is used for classification, for classification of events like uh, distributed attack detection. It has been used in your security incident and event monitoring systems, in your security operation centers. It can be used for malware classification and image classification and audio classification and so on. If you talk about re uh, regression, 
to predict an attack and to predict the machine and user behavior by performing a trend analysis of historical data they can be helpful. Uh, same is the case for, for pattern matching to, to find the presence or absence of a certain pattern. It can be a spam, it can be an object, it can be a malware. And then uh, clustering to for outlier detection for any anomalous traffic within the network to detect a, a phishing attack or a botnet attack at early stage can be helpful. Then uh, finding similar events uh, based on historical data or based on some new data uh, or uh, the, 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 the finding the correlation between the data can be helpful as well. It, it has certain applications. So this is a, these are some of the applications which I consider are which as the most important applications of AI in, in security. Uh, if you talk about malware, it's everywhere. Uh, in 2021, ransomware was considered as one of the most frequent attacks uh, by a number of reports. So detection of ransomware, detection of malware, and classifying it accurately, that what kind of malware it is, it can be, it, it, it can be useful. And it, it, in this case, uh, we, can, we don't have uh, much time to detect the malware because if, it, if we, if we uh, take time to detect a malware, it can uh, cause a harm to your system and it can uh, damage your data. Uh, for cyber attack detection, whether it is a distributed denial of service, whether it is a phishing attack, whether it is an intrusion attempt, or it is the existence of a honeypot detection. Now, when we talk about existence of honeypots, it means uh, the, the ad adversaries can use uh, cyber, uh, can use machine learning to detect existence of honeypots in a network. So this is how, uh, this is another application of uh, uh, AI in, in security. Uh, insider threat detection. The insiders may be uh, generating similar events, but whenever an event, anomaly in an event occurs, that is an insider threat. Uh, similarly, for anomaly detections and for digital forensics, there are a number of applications in digital forensics uh, because in case of forensics, uh, when we are talking about post-incident analysis, uh, in post-incident analysis, uh, we may be interested in identifying a certain uh, voice, a file, uh, a vo a audio file containing a particular sound, uh, a sound of a particular a voice of a particular human, or we may be interested in finding an email or with a particular signature. We may be interested in finding a browser log uh, containing a certain temporary file. So it may be only, not only will be about searching the artifact, but it will be uh, correlating the artifact with a similar artifact identified in some other cases or from uh, some other device. So when a, when a crime happens and we have multiple devices at hand and we want to perform correlation analysis and we want to see that what are the common pieces of artifacts which are used or whether the, the data existing on a hard drive depicts certain uh, certain intentions or inclination towards a crime. Uh, so th this this can be helpful by using the by performing the analysis sentiment analysis or content based analysis of the of the the, the text or the data found in that device. Uh, similarly, for vulnerability management in SIEM, SOC, and SOAR systems, uh, AI can be used uh, for behavioral analytics of users on the different systems. And same is the case for uh, cryptography in the cryptology. Artificial intelligence we use to break break certain uh, certain codes or to find uh, to, to 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 reach the data even faster. So this this is the, there are a number of applications. Slightly, this is a new new area of research. Uh, not much work is done in this domain. So if we talk about malware detection and classification, uh, basically the purpose of malware is to exploit the vulnerabilities already existing in the system, and it can be disastrous because it results in your data theft or crippling of your network traffic. Machine learning and deep learning algorithm have been used from last few years for to solve this problem and have been effective. The signature-based analysis doesn't work uh, uh, anymore because the, uh, the, the types of malwares which are emerging up every day uh, uh, emphasize the need to have a solution which can work on uh, static as well as for uh, on, on, on dynamic uh, scenarios. So one, in one of our work, we have done this uh, malware detection and classification using a data set, uh, which is mentioned over here. Uh, we used CIC Invest and Malware 2019 data sets. They have published a 2020 data set as well, and we are working on that. Uh, this was the second part of the 2017 data set. They used the permission and intents as static features and API calls and generated log files as dynamic features. The data set was structured in this way that it was uh, the basic purpose was to use the features like battery states, log states, and process log, et cetera, to detect malware. So one was uh, static, some were static features and some were dynamic features which are executed 
by executing the malware in a sandbox environment. So in that, this is this one which was this was the work which was published as a result of this uh, sample efficient hyper tuned approach for detection and identification of Android malware family and category. And we were able to identify uh, malware and family and category with uh, greater than ninety seven percent accuracy. In this work, we use the data, uh, pre-process the data by normalizing, by picking, uh, doing random sampling and handling outliers. Then we extracted the features of foreign trust by using the feature reduction algorithm, uh, picked up the selected features, and uh, once uh, first did a static layer analysis to, to identify if it's, a, it's malicious or benign. If the static layers call it's a, a benign application, then uh, we uh, kept it as it is. And then for dynamic layer, it was identified as a malicious. Then we identified its uh, category and family of that malware. Uh, in another work, we have used uh, uh, AI for botnet attack detection in connected vehicles. This was the work which we uh, did in 2020. And we used uh, Ensemble Adaboost classifier for accurate and fast detection of botnet attacks in connected vehicles. And in this work, we uh, were talking about smart cities because in smart cities, when we have connected vehicles, it becomes difficult to, to detect if it is a, if it is a, a botnet has emerged and uh, detecting it uh, is, is important. So we used a publicly available standard data set for botnet activities behavior detection and initially we performed, uh, uh, we had some pre-segmented network acti activities, which we identified, performed some pre-processing on the data, extracted the features, and then uh, identified regular features and identified the temporal features because some temporal features are some, in some kinds, some attacks, temporal features were more important. So uh, we identified those features, performed the classification, and then we called it that based on the traffic generated by your connected vehicles, whether it is a normal traffic or whether it is a, it is a, uh, the, the vehicle system has been compromised. So if the, if the system marked it as a, a vehicle under attack, then we, we can take uh, actions to um, uh, take actions, which are the others, like the, you can say the backup solutions, which we have in case an attack happens. So the best solution is to stop the vehicle or to park the vehicle at some safe place. So we won't be, uh, let a vehicle to keep on moving in case an attack has happened. So uh, in case of, uh, we used uh, it for uh, DDoS attack, uh, uh, attack detection as well. Uh, for uh, botnet, uh, denial of service attack is there, but in case of botnets where multiple systems are collectivity performing the adversarial behavior, so we used, uh, 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 used a D for, D for DDoS attack detection as well, because in this case, uh, 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 anomalies uh, can indicate an, an upcoming DDoS attack. So this was about early uh, detection of a DDoS attack, likely DDoS attack. So predictive methods can analyze large amount of traffic data and then predict that a DDoS attack is likely to happen. So this was the work which we did on, uh, and we used the gated recurrent units because recurrent units can keep the uh, historical data used up in the previously performed classification tasks in mind when, whenever, whenever a new classification is to be performed. So we used it for uh, distributed denial of service attack detection. And uh, another uh, application we have identified for uh, AI in cybersecurity is speech recognition. Speech recognition is common, but we did it for forensic purposes. Like we wanted to identify uh, from uh, multilingual speech data, we wanted to identify emotions. So um, in, in every language, uh, no matter what type of language the, the speaker is, uh, is using or speaking in, the emotions uh, uh, exhibit certain attributes which are common. Uh, so so, so we, we used multilingual data and identified uh, speech emotion recognition, like in a in a, in, a, in, a, in a recording where multiple speakers are talking and in different languages, maybe two persons will be talking to each other or everybody is speaking a different language. So in that case, emotion recognition was hard. So we combined data of uh, different languages. So we used, uh, we uh, like the, the purpose of the developing the solution was uh, one corpus maybe was exhibiting, for example, uh, one corpus like, uh, sorry, one classifier, the CN3 was performing best for Urdu language but the CN3 was not good for German language. The naive Bayesian was good for uh, Arabic language. So what we did was 
we used the classifier for uh, uh, which was that which is good for that particular language and uh, and uh, uh, let the classifier perform the task and at the end we identified which uh, classifier is exhibiting the best results so according to our experimental analysis different classifiers give the highest accuracy on different corpora so we use the ensemble learning approach to get the benefit of combining all classifiers effect instead of choosing one classifier and compromising certain language corpus accuracy and we can we increase the accuracy of the of uh, the emotion recognition by 13 percent for urdu corpus eight percent for german corpus 11 percent for italian and five percent for english corpus for from within corpus testing using the majority voting technique uh, uh, majority voting ensemble technique uh, and this, this is uh, how we did. We used a multilingual data set, extracted the features, uh, performed the pre-processing, used uh, different classifiers to, for prediction, and using the majority voting, we uh, identified the emotion. And we used uh, uh, three different emotions here because in case of forensics, the angry emotion was uh, important for us uh, from all the, uh, the, the, all the audio files. Uh, we wanted to identify that which audio files contain angry emotion. So we use it for emotion recognition. Uh, artificial intelligence has been used for phishing attack detection as well. The purpose of phishing attack, attack is to steal credentials of the users. And we used phishing attack, uh, we, we did phishing attack detection in one of our work by using the two different data sets with the, one, one with 11,000 plus instances and 30 features and another with 10,000 instances. And in this as well, we use ensemble model, although the computational complexity was high in this case, but uh, we were able to detect phishing attack with better uh, accuracy and with better FMA years. Uh, uh, AI can be used in forensics for uh, log data classification. A lot of log data is collected, not only by your uh, devices, network devices, but on your uh, standalone device on, on your system as well. Like if, you're, if you are using a Unix-based systems or Linux-based systems or a Windows system as well. So in all these cases, the system logs, your uh, event logs are maintained. So for log data classification, uh, people have been doing this. We want to identify, for example, a certain uh, crime pattern or certain signatures in the event log which depicts a pattern which, which depicts a crime or in, in certain cases uh, if, if it is a, it is a uh, investigation is required for a company policy violation related case like for example if an employee was not allowed to use uh, uh, to, to send to use the uh, corporate email account to send personal emails or for advertisement purpose or something like that and the employee has used that so in, the, in those cases, or, or in, in, in case the employee was not allowed to, to plug in a USB device in the, in the system and the employee has done that or copied some data on the USB. So in those cases, there will be certain event logs and timings and certain attributes which will be important. So if we can identify those log patterns from the data, or if we can identify or, or use clustering on that, that log data, that will be useful. And logs are not only maintained on a the device, there are logs maintained on cloud on different uh, uh, software by different softwares as well. So this can be used then for anomaly detection, uh, forensic in forensic, it can be helpful. Uh, if you want to, attend, to perform a social media forensic and you are looking for certain terms uh, on social media that are a trigger alarm or that are important for you to identify, like for example, on social media patrolling, you are interested to identify uh, the certain strings which are not allowed to be used in your, on social media by your citizens in a certain state, then you can uh, identify those IDs generating such uh, tweets or generating such, uh, such uh, messages or, or generating such contents. In one of our work, uh, which uh, uh, I have not included in the slide, but we have identified, uh, used uh, religiously hateful memes, identified religiously hateful memes uh, from all the memes generated on social media. So we uh, uh, de developed a solution to, to uh, collect data of, uh, uh, collect memes and then identify which are the, which memes are religiously hateful and then uh, we can report that. Uh, similarly, object detection and classification uh, in your data, for example, if you have acquired a disk image, uh, for example, of uh, uh, more than one TB or uh, of, of a very large size and the, the whole disk is filled up with images and you are interested in identifying images with a certain uh, object like a weapon or a certain car or a certain face. So in that case, deep learning and machine learning is going to help you out because there are already pre-trained libraries available to help you in, in such problems. 
Uh, same is the case with the audio uh, audio detection. Same is the case with the video segmentation. Uh, same is the case with video forgery detection because in certain crimes where there is a uh, okay, this is a case of a video forgery or in case of deep fake audio or deep fake video, the uh, AI is going to uh, help you in forensic investigation. Uh, criminal attribution and profiling. Uh, criminal uh, leave certain signatures on whatever device he or she is using and the, the crime patterns. Uh, so, so those attributes of a criminal which he or she exhibit on a, on a device is the signature of that criminal. So uh, the, 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 through AI, we can detect those signatures. Uh, it can be used for pattern recognition, uh, for use, user behavior tracking on social media, for hate speech detection on social media. Uh, same is the case with adversarial attack analysis. So if, if the adversaries are, uh, are performing an attack, adversarial attack analysis, we can use uh, uh, it for forensic in this case, like if, we, if a crime has happened, but, we, uh, but the criminal denies that he or she has not committed that crime, then we can find out that if the system was under an adversarial attack or, or not, or if the system was compromised or the actually the user has committed this crime or it was a uh, system generated or adversary generated crime. Uh, same is the case with damage assessment in forensics. We can go for damage assessment and uh, 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 we can go for damage assessment as well uh, once a crime has happened. And we want to identify that what has what was with criminal to take away, so or how much damage has been done. What was which data was available or which data was exposed at that time, uh, and same is the case with even evidence correlation. In forensic tools like uh, if we talk about uh, FTK Central or Bel Belkasoft Evidence Center, where we have they are they are performing a platform, they are providing a platform for uh, uh, large data analysis. So in, the, in that case, if evidence acquired from multiple devices and you want to correlate, uh, uh, find correlation between those devices, or you want to form, find correlation between a, uh, a crime which is reported now and a crime, a similar crime reported in past. So if you have a repository of historical data available with you, then you can perform evidence correlation in forensic uh, data as well. But this is, a, this is a, uh, again, uh, an open issue right now because uh, in forensic, uh, uh, a forensic investigator cannot keep historical data for, for a long time because of multiple reasons. And privacy is one of the reasons. So if the data is, uh, they cannot keep the data. So uh, to perform evidence correlation, it, it will be hard. But but they find they have they have developed some solution for this purpose. So in forensic analysis, what we do is that we uh, perform first free processing depending on the problem, select the model. Validate by test set. What what uh, this is how what we uh, how we do in in any uh, machine learning or deep learning based problems. We have used uh, uh, deep learning for uh, semantic based forensic analysis and classification of email data. Uh, email data was important because so far the research done in for email data was for detection of email as a spam email or non spam spam or ham. So, but we were interested in identifying emails uh, uh, as per the type of crimes which are common here, not only in Pakistan, but all over the world. So through emails, a number of crimes gets committed. Sometimes an email is a phishing email. Sometimes it's a spam. Sometimes it's a harassment email. Sometimes it's a threatening email. Sometimes it's a bullying. Sometimes it's a financial fraud. So there can be multiple uh, uh, intentions of sending an email. So uh, we, what we did was we collected the data obtained from a user device about emails. Usually if the user is using Outlook or, or some email, um, a client application on the system, then the such data will be retrieved. So based on the retrieval, retrieved data, we add, or, or if, the, if there was an email server, based on the re retrieved data, we identified emails. Uh, for example, if the case is of, about harassment, so we will identify if the e how many emails retrieved from the systems contain contents which, are, uh, which comes in the category of harassment. So this will actually reduce the investigator's time while investigating the crime. So we, uh, because the email body contains text, we have not used uh, attachments and email signatures over here uh, in this, but we have only used the body of the email to perform sentiment analysis. And because long short term memory uh, and uh, LSTM has been, uh, is, is good for, uh, uh, because we retain memory of the previous classification we have performed. So we, we actually uh, compile data of emails from different sources, and then we uh, form classification and uh, did that. So this is how we did. We uh, collected email data, performed the pre-processing, and uh, it was all about 
removing the certain unlikely words, normalization, removing the tags, then identifying features uh, using word to vect. These are some of the uh, operations which we have, some of the functions which we have used. Then we used uh, uh, LSTM and related to current urine model and some other different models for training and parameter tuning and also used machine learning models for training and parameter tuning. And once after combining those, we then we evaluated the performance of both that whether if you use deep learning, how the system performs and if you use machine learning, how the system performs. So, uh, because obviously if you are going for a deep learning based solution, it adds certain complexity. So for the, for the, uh, the class, for the classes where we can have good accuracy with machine learning, we don't need to use deep learning model. So this is what we do. And in another work, we use the same sentiment analysis uh, for COVID-19 related sentiments on Twitter. This is our most recent work uh, uh, published in the Journal of Public Health in January 2022. Uh, these are the, this is, these are my team members uh, which are working together at Air University. Now there are certain trends in AI and cybersecurity right now, which we need to focus on. First of all, responding to ransomware. Every other day we are listening about devices getting compromised. So detection of ransomware and timely detection of ransomware and responding to ransomware is important. So uh, uh, detection of ransomware and then uh, uh, understanding that what type of ransomware it is, the family of ransomware is important before you can uh, uh, devise a strategy to combat that. Combining application development and cybersecurity. So we're, when we perform uh, research in cybersecurity, we uh, publish our papers and we report our results. In some cases, we are getting good results, but uh, incorporating those research uh, outcomes in products is important and it's more than important in any other domain. Uh, then uh, using deep learning to detect your uh, domain generation algorithm generated domains because uh, there are certain domains which are valid, but there are certain domains which are not valid. They are automatically generated domains. So, detecting the domains which are not valid and uh, generated this way, it's important. Then, uh, non malware threats, not all threats are about malware. There are some non malware threats which are harmless, but can be a preamble for a more serious uh, attack which may be happening in the future. So, detecting those is important. Then the uh, adaptive honey pots and honey tokens. This is another trend which is happening here that when you have designed a, a honey pot, deployed a honey pot, but an attacker is able to detect that honey pot, has detected that honey pot by looking at the, uh, uh, the behaviors or the uh, inputs received by attacker, you should be able to adapt your honey pots as well. So adaptive honey pots is the future. Then uh, deep reinforcement learning. Deep learning is there, but reinforcement learning, uh, learning with the, because the zero day attacks are, for zero day attacks, you need to have deep reinforcement learning. Otherwise you won't be able to handle uh, deep zero day attacks. And protecting the IoT devices. The future is of IoT. Uh, a number of reports say that IoT devices will be, uh, um, the MBUs after, after five to 10 years will be, have, will have more reliance on IoT devices and there is no security available on IoT devices so far or very limited security. So protecting IoT devices, whenever we are going to move towards smart cities and smart environments is important. Okay, if we talk about cybersecurity for AI, so we are using AI for a number of cybersecurity problems as we have, I have just mentioned for distributed denial of service attack, for botnet, for malware, for phishing, for sentiment and, and for forensics. But at the same time, AI -led threat landscape is also very wide. Uh, if you look at it, it's one of the report published by NISA and you can see that there are unintentional damages, there are eavesdropping, disasters, and nefarious activity, physical attacks, all these threats are already there with attack with AI. So with all these uh, attacks included in the AI threat landscape, whenever we are going to use it for cybersecurity, it can be harmful. So if we merge AI and cybersecurity, there can be attacks using artificial intelligence, the attackers at adversary at the same time are using AI, then uh, instead of making the adversary pick up an AI algorithm to perform an attack, there can be autonomous attacks by AI. So AI is, the system is deployed to find the uh, existence of honeypot or to find a, a vulnerability in the system. So automated detection of vulnerability and then automated exploitation of that vulnerability. The systems are out there to perform that. Then there are attacks against AI. 
the AI system which we have used to secure your systems can work against you as well. So if the attacker is able to detect that what type of system, what type of AI classification or clustering solution you have used, because the algorithms used in AI are well known. So if the if the your parameter tuning, your inputs and uh, uh, outputs, your system is exposed and it's open, if they know it's like a white box, then it will be easier for attacker to perform an attack. Then uh, also you can take security measures using AI, which we are already doing. Whenever we are devising some solutions for DDoS attack detection or prevention, malware detection and prevention, these are the solutions, security measures, which we are already uh, have already placed uh, using artificial intelligence. So in adversarial AI, uh, for those who are not much familiar about it, I hope your audience is already familiar with adversarial AI. Uh, it's basically the learning technique that attempts to fool the models by supplying the deceptive input. And purpose is to cause the malfunction in the machine learning model. If the machine learning model was trained to read a stop uh, word from this uh, sign, so if you have added some word or you have changed the resolution or you have added certain uh, pixels to this image, certain pixels to image deliberately to fool the system, the system won't be able to detect a stop sign. So what happens as a result that uh, in a traditional machine learning training phase, your training data, your deep learning training is done and the predictive model based on the given input gives you the correct label. But if your system is under adversarial attack, then your input data is mixed up with certain noise and you can get the perturbated data as input and you give it to the predictive model. So if you are giving it a, a, a wrong data to train the predicted model, then you obviously you are going to get falsified labels. Not always, but in some cases, and this, that some case can be very rare and can be more severe. So this is the adversarial attack. Another example can be if the machine model is there to detect that this is an image of a crow. Uh, now, this I have picked this image, but it can be image of a weapon, it can be a face, it can be an object, it can be a car number plate, it can be a certain object which you are uh, interested in. So if you add certain adversarial noise to this, so uh, in each, uh, actually it's a crow, but with some adversarial noise, the system will identify it as a, as a pigeon, which it is not. And uh, in the same way, if the stop sign is, uh, this is this uh, is detected with confidence of, so for example, 91%, 91.53%. So the system deep learning model, machine learning model was able to detect this, or even uh, any deep learning model was able to detect with 91.53 accuracy with addition of some noise, the image will be different and you will maybe detecting it as something else. So it is detected as, for example, a flower pot with 83.74 accuracy. So this is a totally wrong output, which we wanted to have. So this can be very harmful in case we are using for, uh, for a problem. For example, if you look at this, so this is a system, uh, normal functioning of the system and the system when the system is under attack. I have got this video from one of the source available on the web. So in this case, this was the purpose was to stop. So in this case, the car will stop here. But in this case, the stop sign is poisoned or it, it's different. So if the stop sign attack is there, so it may be showing the speed limit is 45. Look, instead of stopping, the car will be moving with a speed limit of 45. Similarly, an attacking uh, attacking end-to-end -end autonomous car can happen. For example, in this case, uh, now look at this video. In this case, the car was to move uh, in this case, there was no attack. The car was, uh, the convolution neural network was trained for end-to-end, -end, for example, autonomous driving. So in this case, if you look at how the car is driving, there are certain attributes which are there. So autonomous car, user can see on the screen, following this yellow line and following the uh, different patterns, the car is moving perfectly. I repeat, if you look at this, acceleration, brake, stair, different attributes, and the car is moving perfectly. Now in this case, if in case this car is, this system is under attack. So look at this. For example, if you just add or paint this object to the road and then rotate it. So on road, if you add the sign, now in this figure, you can see that you have added the sign and on the road. So now let's see how this car performs. The car was following the, the, the line. And now in this case, you see, the car is moving in some wrong direction. If you look at it closely, I repeat. 
So in this case, the acceleration, brake, and stair, look at the attributes as well. The car is following some different direction. So this is an end-to-end -end autonomous vehicle uh, attack on end-to-end -end autonomous car. Adversarial AI can be uh, used, has been used for fraud detection, for they can use for malware detection, for intrusion detection. And, and when we talk about adversarial AI, it's a world of bad actors and the bad actors have objectives. These bad actors are attackers and what their objectives are. They want to keep performing malicious functions, whatever their function is, whether it, it is a compromise of a system, whether it is a DDoS attack, whether it is a phishing attack. They want to continue performing the activities and at the same time, they want to, they don't want to be detected. So they are performing the malicious functions and they are difficult to detect. And how they make themselves difficult to detect because they change the, their behavior. They change their observed instances uh, and their behavior to accomplish their goals. So if they see that the existing behavior is detected or is detectable, then they change their behaviors. When we look at the categories of attacks, the adversarial attacks are performed, the, there are three dimensions, attack timing, attacker information, and attacker goals. When we talk about attacker timings, uh, the attack can be a decision time attack or it can be a training time attack. The, it is, can be classified based on the information available with the attacker. If the attacker knows about the, your, your uh, model or some attribute, it's a white box, and if attacker has no information about your model, your data, your inputs and outputs, it's a black box. And also the attacker's goal may be uh, targeted to target a certain machine or user, or it can be just to make the overall systems unreliable. So if it's a decision time attack, the attacker attacks the model and uh, adding by adding some noise and making uh, it do the wrong uh, predictions. Like in, instead of predicting as a, as, a, as a crow, it is now predicting as something else, a pigeon. In case it can be a poisoning attack, like with the raw data, you are uh, doing some malicious manipulation and instead of giving the raw data as input, you are giving the poisoned raw data, which looks like the original data. And whenever, whatever operations you are performing onwards, whether it is feature selection, processing, and then learning, it is going to give you wrong result because the input data you have done is poisonous. Same happens whenever you are uh, going to retrain your model. Retraining is must in case of uh, your um, deep learning and machine learning algorithms. So whenever you are going retraining and in retraining, you, you uh, somehow get poisonous data. So it, the model is not going to perform the way it was performing before. In case of white box attack, attacker knows everything they need to know about the system. Uh, in case of decision time attack, if it is a decision time poisoning, attacker knows the model, knows the features, knows the algorithms, and then can learn the algorithm. In case of poisoning attack, the attacker know the algorithm feature and data set as well uh, in case of black box. In case of black box attack, sorry, in case of white box, in case of black box attack, any limitation on the information to the attacker, the attacker don't know about the model or the algorithm or the features, uh, but has partial information, it's, then it's like a black box attack. The attacker, attacker might be targeting uh, an instance and want to do it a wrong prediction, or maybe targeting the reliability, making the learning unreliable and maximizing the prediction error. So if the adversary is using, uh, the attacker has intention is to uh, compromise the reliability, then the attacker will actually try to, to um, uh, we can say that uh, reduce the performance of your uh, trained model and maximize the prediction error in case of, for example, supervised learning. So if the classification was for spam or ham, or it was for malicious or benign software, for intrusion, for DDoS, so the, the classification under attack won't be able to do the classification correctly. And obviously in this case, your uh, system will be compromised. It can be a way an attack where uh, the adversary who previously chose an instance X, which is now classified as malicious, now will choose another instance, which is classified as benign and will call it a malicious. So actually it is going to do wrong, wrong uh, predictions. Uh, so far, in case of if we talk about adversary, adversaries and adversarial AIs, all attacks so far are white box. And uh, we know the decision functions, which are already there. We know how they work. Uh, for every algorithm, we know that what are the parameters it have, have the fitness function it might be having, uh, what are the parameters which can be tuned. And we know about the features as well most of the time because the data sets are already available out there for the researchers to use. 
So, so far the adversaries, they are performing an attack. These are white box attacks. But uh, uh, in practice, all of these assumptions may be invalid as well, because if the attacker uh, don't know that the CN boundary, if you have designed your system in such a way that they are not aware about the functions which you have used, the how you have used, uh, how which features you have extracted, you have not used all the features. We have used some feature uh, reduction algorithm with some manual input. So in this case, then uh, the you, they won't be able to uh, detect it. It will be white. Uh, it will be black box attack for them. If you are going to use cybersecurity, you are you are going to secure your systems, your air systems, and uh, about uh, it's all about uh, scalability. Uh, formulating a formulation of an uh, approach uh, which can only scale to dozens of features and relatively small data sets. So uh, this is another limitation because we don't have uh, unlimited or you can say uh, even the sets which are combined, uh, which are which are uh, composed or are available, they are available for everyone. Uh, similarly, uh, uh, if you're using uh, cybersecurity for AI, then it will be your the classifiers you are going to use. So far, they have used linear classifiers. Uh, we are not uh, combining multiple classifiers to come up with the, the solutions. And also, the attack model is limited to threats, which are optimizers, which are we only need though that when we want to reduce the minimizing cost. We may not be uh, interested in uh, some part because we, the 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 goal of adversary and the goal of the uh, adver the person working against adversary as well all are very clear. Uh, but so far, the models which are used are actually trying to maximize or minimize something. But the behavioral and data-driven models are missing. The behavioral models which are observing the uh, behavior of adversaries or the models which are uh, collecting the data and then uh, uh, coming up with some uh, useful information, meaningful information from that data, these are missing. And uh, a simple solution in the absence of all these things is to go for iterative training, but with clean data, making sure that the, uh, even if you don't need retraining, but uh, retraining won't harm. So go for retraining in that case. Uh, with this, I will uh, tell you about some of, uh, some more work which we are doing. Uh, we are working on uh, evading of obscure communication from spam emails. So one of the published work is there. And another work which we did uh, two years back was about uh, watermarking for software protection against cyber attacks. So far, watermarking has been used for copyright protection. What we say that if we watermark software code in such a way that in case attack happens, in case a, a software uh, gets changed, the system should be able to restore its original state. So this work was about this. And uh, with this, uh, I, I would like to thank you for uh, listening to me and I will tell you about something about myself. I'm from the Department of Cybersecurity and I am a researcher in National Cyber Crimes and Forensics Lab and EC Consul Certified Computer Hacking Forensic Investigator. These are my research domains, which I just talked about is my Google Scholar profile and LinkedIn profile. And uh, this is the uh, web page of my university. At Air University, we have uh, eight faculties and 15 plus academic departments. One of the faculty is Faculty of Computing and Artificial Intelligence. The others are Social Sciences, Medical, Aviation, Avionics and Aeronautics, Engineering, and so on. So in Computing and Artificial Intelligence, we have three departments, Department of Cybersecurity. I'm with Department of Cybersecurity. And uh, we, we are working on different solutions and in different labs, which is about, they are about hardware security, about software security, about network security, and about forensics. Forensics is basically my domain. And another uh, department is computer science, offering different programs in computing disciplines. And another department is creative technologies department, offering uh, degrees in artificial intelligence and gaming and multimedia. And other uh, BS masters and PhD level programs are being offered by this program. Air University has different international linkages. You can see some of the universities which we are linked up already. And we would like to link with uh, this university as well. And this is the page of your National Center for Cybersecurity, which was uh, established in 2018 in Pakistan. And under this center, we have 11 research labs which are spread out throughout Pakistan. This is a map of Pakistan. You can see the locations of different labs in Pakistan. The center is in Islamabad. 
these are the different labs are working in different domains. Some are working in dark web security, some in web, working on web security, uh, some are uh, on uh, IoT security and cloud security and so on. So at Air University, we have two labs. One is National Cybercrimes and Forensics Lab, and other is Devices and Network Security Lab. So both labs are working with a team of uh, uh, above, uh, you can say that above 70 researchers, including professors and uh, students, PhD scholars, and uh, different developers. They are working on the development of different solutions and they have uh, developed, uh, all these labs have collectively developed 70 plus cybersecurity products, which we have showcased uh, in a number of forums. Last year in uh, IEEE International Conference on Cyber Warfare and Security, we exhibited our cybersecurity products, which we have developed. And we have a, a number of active researchers who are working in this domain. So uh, that's all from my side. I would love to receive more questions if you have any. Thank you, uh, Dr. Zubaya. I would like the participants, if you have any questions, you can ask uh, now, or you can also send us the questions uh, through chat. I'll show my email ID again. Uh, this is my email ID. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. You can also reach out to us and we can um, ask Sunaya and ask the questions. Uh, or you can ask now also. We have like five minutes. Um, I think one hand is raised. Yeah, Jawad, do you want to ask a question? Yeah, uh, I don't ask any question, but I like to appreciate uh, Ms. Zunera uh, for presenting the session. And uh, I think it's well versed and uh, she covers every aspect of it. Uh, and uh, I just want to thank you uh, for uh, enlightening us uh, for this uh, session. I think uh, I'm not from uh, academia background, but I'm a practitioner background. But the thing is, uh, I get to have some good insights about uh, uh, the new upcoming era on AI with respect to cybersecurity. And heads off to Dr. Zunaira and uh, those who are researching in this domain. And uh, good luck for that as well. Uh, this is my small. Uh, um, thank you. Thank you. For Dr. Thank you. Thank you, my pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Bushra. Yes. Hello. Thanks. I mean, uh, Zunera, it's, it's really great to listen to you. Uh, and uh, you have given quite a I mean, comprehensive overview of the research which is going on uh, for the, you know, that I means security uh, and AI at the intersection. So, Busha, I was hoping that you would have a question, tons of questions, even though the example came from the computer vision. So we did not, uh, you know, that uh, in, uh, I think, I mean, the, our computer vision uh, colleagues are quite focused on uh, different domains. I'm not sure whether they do uh, adversarial machine learning, uh, but they do quite a lot of other things, I mean, in that aspect. So uh, this uh, spam and ham, which are, it's, it's your area uh, yeah, as so far as I know. And uh, the other uh, who I can say that thing, uh, we are using AI for software security, <clears throat> exactly the machine learning, uh, you know, that I mean deep learning and NLP, uh, mainly focus on the uh, vulnerability prediction models in, in that aspect. So yeah, so guys, I mean, if you have any question, you can ask now. Uh, uh, I have I one said, question. Like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have one question. That like, from where you get the data sets? Because I think the data sets from email classification are very obsolete, and you cannot find the public uh, data sets. And if you get the private, like from the private, usually the news new papers are published on private data sets, which are not available. So. Um, yeah, this is one of the questions because data set availability is like a major issue okay. in cybersecurity. Yes, for, for email classification, we face this problem because uh, all the data available was about uh, spam or ham. And uh, some data sets were available about financial fraud detection. 
and some data sets were available about harassment. So what we did was we uh, designed our own data sets by combining data from all sources. Then we published it and made it available for other researchers to, to use. So this is, this is what we have done, but you are right. In case of audio classification as well, when we were looking forward to, uh, to classify objects like, for example, we were interested to identify uh, glass break sound, police siren, uh, child try, and a fire alarm. And so we uh, identified seven classes. But for that, we faced problem of uh, getting the data sets. So what we did was that we created data set ourselves and made it available for other researchers. So this, this work is on way. Uh, it, it's big, it's very hard because a researcher has to spend uh, three to four months time just to compile the data set, just to clean the data sets and make sure that it is comprehensive and complete. So you are right that in case uh, in cybersecurity domain, there is lack of data sets, but there are some, some organizations which are uh, some universities as well, like I talked about Canadian Institute of Cybersecurity on UCI as well, uh, malware data sets. There are many malware data sets out there even in 2022, at the beginning of 2022, another data set was released. So they, these are helpful sources. But I think uh, the, in, in future, we should have, uh, if we will deploy certain uh, solutions for data set collection as well at our air end, just the way adversaries are doing uh, for collection. So in that way, we'll be able to, to, to have solutions which are which will be developed based on our own attack uh, vector, which we are facing at the moment. So having a cyber range or having a solution uh, to, to, for collection of data sets to study the, the kinds of attacks which are happening against your organization uh, is important. But I think right now, uh, no organization is focusing on studying the, their future attack vector to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, and I think another thing I faced mostly mm -hmm. in universal machine learning is the reproducibility um, of the available solution. So the available solutions are usually not available online or publicly available so that they can be tested uh, and we can ensure or evaluate their security. And um, and currently, like like you have mentioned, like in your email and sentiment classification that you have done, you achieved a very good accuracy. Uh, but uh, these type of models get, uh, you know, corrupt by just uh, changing certain words or adding mistype or, or send them substitution. Um, so I, and like the adversarial training has been proposed to basically defend against uh, these kind of things and it incorporates new data that is augmented with the data set. But the issue is like, we cannot cover all the scenarios to become, make them robust. And then um, the basic question is like, how we can help uh, the research community to make their data public uh, without hindering the privacy of the data? and privacy of the solution that is being trained on AI system uh, for cybersecurity? I think first of all, all the researchers who are working in certain domains should, should share their uh, data sets with others. So, and this is, this is what happens, but sometimes they don't share immediately due to a number of reasons. Uh, I, uh, I, I agree with you that whenever we are devising a solution, we are not looking at the kind of uh, attacks which can be performed on those solution. May it be a phishing attack solution or DDoS. And you're right, if we talk about email classification, uh, but I, am, I have used this sentiment analysis for post-incident email classification when we have received emails for forensic analysis. At that time, attack is not possible because all the emails which were, which were generated on that system, which were received on that system will be in their original state. But you are right. Uh, I would recommend you to read my paper, which I mentioned in the last slide, Key Split Watermark. That paper was about a software codes in which your software code, if it gets tampered, like you're right that uh, I explored this uh, problem of text watermarking when I was doing PhD, that synonym substitution attack, uh, passivization active to passivize conversion attack, similarly ch changing the, 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 the grammar of the sentence, uh, replacing certain words, with uh, like verbs with their first form. So these kinds of attacks do happen on text. But uh, uh, if we talk about the, the data set, which are based on, which are generated by your network devices, not many attacks are possible over there because every 
attribute will be of a particular type, will be within a particular range. So if, uh, and there are all, all checks already there in their, in their uh, device drivers or in their configurations where certain values cannot go beyond a certain limit or below a certain limit. So in, the, in those cases, uh, it, it, it may not be possible, but you are right that whenever we are developing a solution based on some set of sets, we are not looking at what kinds of attacks are possible on that solution. So this is what we need to, need to, to think about it as well, that what the system we have designed this can be attacked in this, this, this way as well. So adversary point of view is important. I hope you, I answered your question. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah. A hand is raised, I think, uh, Dr. Naim Junjua. Hi, hi, this is I'm Dr. Naim Junju. I'm colleague of Dr. Sunera at Air University. Uh, just one comment. Uh, uh, this uh, deep learning algorithms, they are uh, basically breaking the bounds and, and we are getting uh, uh, applications that can pinpoint very exactly what's happening. But when it's come to the explainability aspects, then definitely there are many questions that are being raised, especially in Australia. Uh, the laws are strict. I have been over there for, uh, for a long term time. Uh, so I was wondering, uh, again, this is a suggestion open to Professor Lee Barber. Why not we such a set up our uh, interest group? How we can bring explainability to this real? And my, I'm working currently on knowledge graphs, and knowledge graph can address this problem. I had done work in uh, building reasoning chain using argumentation techniques to justify your claim using the evidence. So, so this is the area which uh, we can explore. And and following this uh, talk, definitely, uh, I, I will be in touch with uh, Dr. Zunera and Professor Barber uh, to establish something like this, where we, we are basically building these state-of-the-art applications. Uh, along with that, they also address the community concerns where explanatory comes into the play when we have law and moral and ethics uh, involved in our community. Thank you. Bushra, there, uh, there is one more question, and I think I mean, we can wrap up because most of the folks in Australia would be looking forward to the weekend. Okay, assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm from uh, Institute of Space Technology. My question is, you have discussed the uh, ransomware in your presentation. So is there, can we use AI to detect which type of algorithm is used for ransomware? Yes, yes, we can use because the data sets which are published recently by different, uh, so one of the data sets I mentioned is Canadian Institute of Cybersecurity. They have 45,000 plus malware samples, attributes of 45,000 plus malware samples. And in those, there are samples of ransomware as well. So every ransomware, which uh, when it uh, attacks the systems, it exhibits or has certain signatures. By those signatures, we identify the family of ransomware because every ransomware writer writes it in a different way. So those attributes, which are signatures of that ransomware, identify the family of that ransomware. So uh, we can we can do, and these are all the uh, attributes in the feature set, which are used by machine learning algorithms. Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, so yeah, if you have any other questions, you can uh, feel free to contact me or uh, on our Twitter handler or you can send us to our LinkedIn handler. Thank you, Dr. Zanaya, once again for this. And thank you very talk. much, Yabira. Yep. Thank you, Dr. Ali Barber. It was you. a pleasure to be again. here. And I look forward for future uh, collaboration and interest group in explainability. Yeah, uh, certainly. Yep, we will be in touch with you. And okay, and name as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye now. Thank you. Bye. And everyone have